Mattia Bonotto was forced to step down as Ferrari's team principal at the end of the 2022 Formula One season. But the Swiss Italian story is far from over. In fact, there is a surprising chain of events that could lead to Bonotto heading to one of Ferrari's biggest rivals in the future. And it could be a way for him to avenge himself after being fired from the Scuderia despite assurances that his employment was secure. Without further ado, let's look at the rumors and reports, what they mean, and the general mood at Ferrari regarding Mattia Bonotto's replacement. Mattia Bonotto tipped to join Andretti Cadillac Formula One bid. Following challenging seasons in 2020 and 2021, Ferrari capitalized on the introduction of F1's all-new regulations to emerge as a front-running force, claiming a 1-2 finish in Bahrain with drivers Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. However, after some early season success, Leclerc and Ferrari's title hopes were dashed by a combination of unreliability, strategy miscalculations and driver errors, as well as rival Red Bull's relentlessness. Ferrari denied initial reports of a structural change in the Italian media. But further speculation emerged in the aftermath of the Abu Dhabi season finale and the Scuderia soon issued a statement confirming Binotto's resignation. With the regret that this entails, I have decided to conclude my collaboration with Ferrari, said Bonotto. I'm leaving a company that I love, which I've been part of for 28 years, with the serenity that comes from the conviction that I've made every effort to achieve the objective set. I leave a united and growing team, a strong team, ready, I'm sure, to achieve the highest goals, to which I wish all the best for the future. I think it is right to take this step at this time as hard as this decision has been for me. I would like to thank all the people at the Gestione Sportiva who've shared this journey with me, made up of difficulties, but also of great satisfaction. Despite Bonotto's choice of words, there are indications that their split was not amicable, and that the ex-team boss will look to take a shot at the team at the earliest opportunity. And in order to fully comprehend the implications of how that could be possible, we must look at a team that does not yet exist. After FIA President Mohammed Ben Suleim expressed his support for the proposal on social media, Andretti Cadillac's bid to join the Formula One grid is one that is currently gaining traction. With everything falling into place, it appears more likely than not that Andretti will be on the grid in 2026. Money has never been an issue for the prospective American side, with the previous issue being gaining the backing of the ruling body. Following Ben Suleim's support, obtaining FIA support no longer appears to be an issue, implying that Andretti must begin making further inroads into their future team. To gain the support of Formula One and the current teams, Andretti must demonstrate why they truly want to join the pinnacle of motorsport and that they are in it for the long haul. They must demonstrate the start of a real project, which begins with the appointment of a technical director. This is most likely the next step in Andretti's journey to Formula One, with the appointment of a technical director critical to the successful start in F1. Andreas Seidel, former McLaren team principal, would have been the ideal choice for the Americans. However, Sauber has poached him to prepare for Audi's merger with the side in 2026. With that in mind, many, including F1 journalist Gary Anderson, have suggested that former Ferrari boss Mattia Binotto would be an ideal technical director for Andretti, and they may be correct. Who is better to oversee a new project than someone with 28 years of experience at the highest level and a reputation as one of the best technical directors in the industry? While Binotto's tenure as Ferrari's team principal was questionable, he will be driven to prove the Italians wrong. And what better place to do so than with a team that no current outfit wants to see on the grid? More importantly, his experience is invaluable, with the Italian knowing exactly what it takes to build a winning machine, having been a part of the Maranello-based outfit since 1995. Given the possibility of anything happening, his attention to detail and calmness are two other qualities that would suit a new team. 
To add fuel to the fire, if Bonotto is as outraged as we expect, he will no doubt relish the opportunity to run in direct competition with Ferrari. Ferrari pay extra compensation to stop Mattia Bonotto from joining rival teams. And there are numerous indications that Ferrari is already concerned about this possibility. According to reports from Italy, Bonotto's gardening leave has been extended from six months to the end of 2023, preventing the 53-year-old engineer from signing with another F1 team. He reportedly signed an agreement to sit out the sport for a year in exchange for additional compensation, indicating that Ferrari understands how valuable Bonotto would be to any of their competitors. This lends credence to the theory that Bonotto will eventually rise to be a major problem for Ferrari and would definitely make for some very juicy drama behind the scenes. Vasseur and Bonotto's Ferrari roles have an ominous difference. On the other hand, as some of Ferrari's recent moves suggest, it may take no input from Bonotto at all to completely destroy Ferrari's future chances. As you may know, Frederic Vasseur, who led Alfa Romeo to sixth place in the Constructors' Championship in 2022, the team's best finish in a decade, has taken over as Ferrari Formula One team principal. However, it is not a completely equivalent role swap, not in terms of the full job title. Unlike Binotto, who was also the managing director of Ferrari's sporting division, Vasseur's additional title is general manager. What exactly does this mean? Well, some believe it is an ominous sign that Vasseur will have a similar purview than Bonotto and thus be more vulnerable to interference from above, a scenario that has historically done Ferrari more harm than good. It feels like they've almost gone the wrong way in that if anything they needed a more powerful team boss to deal with all that, commented F1 pundit Ed Straw. It's never that encouraging when those at the kind of higher corporate level try to get more directly involved. That rarely works in F1 because F1 is so specialized. Fred Vasseur is very good at running a race team, but the problem is wider when it comes to Ferrari. Ferrari's greatest successes in the modern era occurred during Jean Todt's leadership of the sporting side, which allowed the Ross Braun, Rory Byrne and Michael Schumacher access to focus on returning the team to the top of F1 with little interference from the larger Ferrari corporate structure. This suggests that the solution here should be to hire someone else as another layer of management between Vasseur and Ferrari CEO Benedetto Vigna to take on Todd's role and allow Vasseur to function similarly to Braun. I think they need someone who is on that CEO level, who is basically responsible for running either the racing division or specifically the F1 division," suggested F1 journalist Scott Mitchell. And you can have a team principal beneath that. That could be your Fred Vasseur, just purely as a team boss managing the day-to-day. But you need someone who's going to shield the team from the board level stuff and have a proper say in the bigger picture conceptual things while having a grasp of what an F1 team needs. Now Vigna, as the Ferrari CEO, may come to be that person, but that's something we'll only know in time. I'm not exactly particularly confident or convinced that that's what will happen. Vasseur's background is also cause for concern on this front. His first F1 role at Renault in 2016 lasted under a year before friction with managing director Cyril Abitbol led to his departure from the team principal position. There are some similarities and some differences, the key difference being that was Fred's first year in F1 after his stellar junior single-seater career in terms of running race teams in those championships and the other initiatives and side projects he was involved in at the art concern, said Mitchell of the Renault 2016 comparison. So he's a lot more experienced now, that's certainly a different factor. There is a parallel to be drawn in that at Renault he was just there to run the race team, but got interfered with too much by people above him. So I guess you could argue that there's potentially the risk of exactly the same thing happening at Ferrari, which is not what's needed at all. However, there may be a much better option for the new team boss, and one that is already in the team. Jean Alessi identifies ideal person to help Fred Vasseur. Despite having a prestigious motorsport background, Vasseur is taking on one of the most scrutinized and high-pressure jobs in any motorsport category. 
Jean Alesi, who raced for the Scuderia in the early 1990s and won his only F1 Grand Prix with the team in 1995, declared the Ferrari team unwatchable in 2022. After they squandered an early points lead due to unreliability and tactical errors. And with Vasseur opting for stability in the first season as Ferrari's team principal, with no planned restructuring or personnel changes, Alessi believes the 54-year-old can rely on sporting director Laurel Makis for assistance during 2023. I think Vasseur has to rely very much on Laurel Makis, Alessi remarked. Makis has been at Ferrari for years and he can be the ideal person for Vasseur to see where things need to be changed and what, on the contrary, should stay the same because there is potential. Vasseur is the first non-Italian to take over as team boss since compatriot Jean Todd's departure. However, Alessi cautioned Vasseur against attempting to change Ferrari's cultural mindset. If you tell me that Ferrari is going to speak or should speak more and more French, I will say no immediately, he said. Marinello is Italian. One has to speak Italian and only Italian. I once drove for the Scuderia and there I experienced the very best moments of my career. What are your thoughts on the new Ferrari boss? Will he be able to lead the team to victory? What about Mattia Bonotto and the possibility of joining Andretti in 2026? Is that a threat for Ferrari? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing. Be sure to click the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.